<laughs> we were just talking to uh, a rude pundit about uh, Andrew Cuomo because I don't, you know, not being a New Yorker, I didn't know a lot about it. It doesn't look right, good. Right, right. It's, the response doesn't look good. Um, but Seth Abramson said, if you're wondering why Republicans were so worked up about Al Franken years ago and are so worked up about Cuomo now but had no issue with the serial rapist who used to occupy uh, the White House, it's because apparently you have to get to 25 assault allegations before re Republicans uh, start caring. And I, I think that's you're just your back goes up. The minute you're like, yeah. oh, this looks like a hit job, like I and again, we'll see what happens with it. You know, if it's justified after the investigation, he does not seem like he's handling it well. But still, I'm just we're so used to Eric, these double standards, we're like how the party of Trump says anything about <laughs> any know. of this is just yeah. right. Infuriating. Mm -hmm. Well, they, they try to jump in. They try to do double standards. They try to do this and that. But the fact is, Democrats handle this exactly how they're supposed to handle it you know uh look Cuomo has a lot of enemies uh, after so many years in democratic enemies in new york i'm talking not the women of course but right. just his political right. enemies uh there are lots of people in new york would love to see him yeah uh, um, uh leave but you can't criticize you know you know first he said well i'm going to appoint someone then 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 new york democrats said whoa whoa, whoa we need someone independent so now there's going to be someone independent this is exactly how you're supposed to handle right. it. Right. Uh, and and so it really leaves no room for Republicans to rush in and say, and hey, Democrats, what about Democrats always hold these kind of people to yeah. account. That's the, exactly. and sometimes too much. I was one of the people that said Al Franken should not resign over a goofy photo when he was a comedian. Like I, I just okay. Anyway, but the, but the, the, the hypocrisy is, is so important. I mean, the, you know. Right. Uh, Republicans have just punted after four years of anything having to do with this, but they'll try. But they'll try. And Cruz and Hawley are traitorous, seditionist, insurrectionists, and they're bragging about it on the CPAC stage this weekend, not resigning. Uh, Ted Cruz left 55, you know, how many people to yeah. freeze in, in Texas while he went to, right? But they would they'd never resign. I mean, it's and, so. And he, right. He was making jokes about Cancun over the weekend at CPAC. Yeah. Um, saved yeah. a, a couple other tweets uh, for you that are not yours. Um, but uh, yeah, Double Wearer said, so Face the Nation just allows guests, guests to lie. The RNC chairwoman just said two and a half million women lost jobs because of daycare under the Biden administration. That is a bold faced lie. And Joe Walsh with a related tweet, Eric said, Donald Trump has taught Republicans that they should lie all the time about anything and everything. Oh, and, yeah. And that, that, here, that, here we are. To me, that is probably the most important Trump legacy is not just what he did. But what he signaled to the Republican Party, and frankly, you know, the Republican Party watched what Trump was able to get away with in 2015, 2016, and they took it to heart, meaning get away with, mm -hmm. there was, you know, there's virtually no downside from the press, right? They're not going to call him a liar. They're not going to call him a psychopath. They're not going to hold him accountable. They're going to say he's so savvy. He's outmaneuvering Democrats. You know, he plays hardball. And we've talked about this. The first thing, the first major policy initiative from the Republic, from the Trump administration was repealing uh, Obamacare. Republicans came up with their, quote, health care. They lied about that thing nonstop. Every Republican who went on TV, you know, they didn't have a hearing. They wouldn't release the bill. That was the telltale sign early on in the Trump administration that, that Joe Walsh's point is exactly right. He taught them it's OK to lie about everything yeah. there's a huge difference between spin and lying yeah that health bill republicans were saying you know pre-existing conditions are covered that is the most bold bold-faced lie and the press should have taken that as a sign in 2017 that yeah. we are dealing with something we have never seen before in this country but we're four years later and they still they're still not dealing with it yeah, I mean, and you know, and here we go with COVID relief. Um, you said not one Republican in the House or Senate is going to vote for the COVID reveal, which has 83 percent public re support in the poll you were looking at. And you said D.C. press puzzled why Biden can't create unity. <laughs> I mean, it's what if what if, if that's not unity, right? I mean, he, Biden has united this country around COVID relief bill. I mean, yeah. it, it is amazing. It is his signature bill. It is his first bill. It's out of the gate. And the entire country basically wants the new Democratic president to succeed with this bill because they understand how important it is. And he can't get a single. This isn't a this isn't a tax bill. This isn't even yeah. 
you know, a, a gun bill which runs passionate. This is just saving the economy, opening schools, saving local governments. He can't get one vote. Polls show 60, 70 percent of Republicans, you know, support this bill. Yeah. Uh, but the press is so cemented to this idea that, you know, Biden's going to fail if this isn't bipartisan. And they're cemented to, to the idea of not addressing just how radical you yeah. know, Republican obstruction has mm -hmm. become. And I mean, you could come up with a textbook piece of legislation to say, if Republic, if we can't get one vote on this, yeah. the problem is not the Biden White House. There's something seriously wrong with the Republican Party. Well, and Eric, here's another one. Um, hey, you know, it seems like, honestly, in the first month, we've gotten so much confidence and, and bipartisan yeah. unity in the country on right, what, right, what Biden's, right. everything Biden's proposing, even his approval rating. They have to look for things, right? I just, uh, Christopher Boozy tweeted, Jamal Khashoggi was br brutally murdered in 2018, and journalists out here are blaming Joe Biden for letting MBS get away with it. Like, everyone didn't know MBS murdered Khashoggi back in 2018. Where was the pressure on Trump and his administration to do something back then? Yeah. And worse than that, he excused them and then bragged about it to Tom, to, uh, Bob Woodward. Oh, I saved oh, yeah. his ass. Like, oh, he says yeah. it very strongly he didn't do it, so I guess he didn't do I mean... You know, and again, I, I, this is not done from what I'm hearing, the way that we are going to, uh, you know, punish Saudi Arabia. I mean, obviously, there's a right, few right. things they've already announced, and it's, it's sort of, and, and I agree that, you know, I mean, he is despicable, MBS. And, but, you know, I, again, when it's complex like this, and there are United States interests, you know, whether it's via Iran or Yemen or whatever, right. it, it's, but I'm just saying it, it just feels like they're looking for a gotcha. You know, you yeah, know it's yeah, a joke yeah. for Joe Biden. You know, like you said yeah, this. And, right. It's, it's a difference between the Biden, new Biden administration, I guess, trying to thread the needle. I'd like to see a, a tougher response as well yeah. compared to Trump, who literally covered up this crime. And I remember when it happened and I was watching, you know, the, you know, the poor Washington Post was in the middle of it. It was their colleague who was murdered. Yeah. And I remember the Washington, watching the Post, watching these other major news organizations. And, and, and this was 2018. They were going to they were going to reason with Trump. You know, if they felt like if he just understood the facts, you know, he would come around and he would do something. Little did they know he literally was part of the cover up. New York mm -hmm. Times publisher went to, uh, inter you know, had to sit down with Trump in 2018, you know, supposedly to urge him to stop using fake news and, and things like that. This was weeks after the Khashoggi murder, you know, and the New York Times publisher did, barely even brought it up. You yeah. know, they, it should have been a 20 minute conversation with Trump. Uh, but, you know, that was an example of, of the press just didn't really understand with what kind of monster they were dealing with. And this yeah. was already 2018. Hey, you know, I, I, his, his heart's in the right place. He, he wants to protect American journalists. Are you kidding me? He, yeah. He wouldn't yeah. care. He doesn't care how many American journalists would get killed. Yeah, no, I know. Well, and then on to your main course, which don't even get me started. Near a tandem, slowly I turned. But you said how the press <laughs> keeps playing dumb about sexism and racism. You said the easiest way for the media to deal with the menacing role gender and race play in American politics is to simply ignore the topic. Um, you said, you know, Manchin, of course, became the first U.S. senator in history to vote against a cabinet level nominee from his own party because that person was deemed too partisan because her tone was wrong. The stunning bout of illogical concern barely drew a second look from Beltway pundits, many of whom nodded their heads in agreement as if the uncharted move made perfect sense. It's just shades of Hillary, right? Her tone's wrong. Oh, gosh. You know, it's, yeah. it's, and you said it should have sparked a, a searing and widespread look at whether women, particularly women of color, are held to a different standard when they throw the same partisan elbows around. In 2018, Manchin voted to confirm right-wing Twitter troll Richard Grinnell. Yeah, on and on. And you said the news media stressed that the Biden White House is to blame for the possibly failed nominee for miscalculating. Right. <laughs> You're like, really? Oh, they're, they're, yeah. They're so, they're so desperate to turn this into a process story, right? Oh, you know, they miscalculated the count of votes, you know, uh, they upset Manchin, you know, why, why can't they hold their caucus together? If that, that, the Beltway Press loves process stories. What they don't like is racism stories, is sexism yeah. stories, misogyny stories. Yeah. Washington Post yesterday, this was two days after I wrote my column, yesterday in today's print edition, 3,000 word article on the quote, morality play of Nina Ta Nira Tandon's nomination. Not one sentence about sexism or racism. I mean, I 
don't even know how how do you how do you physically do that? How do you write that? And then as an editor, how do you read that and say, yeah, this is great, three thousand words. We're not even going to address yeah. what's happening at the center a of it. A double standard. Yeah, like, yeah. Just like you and I and so many others in 2016, we were talking and eight, 2008 when Hillary ran both times. We're talking misogyny, misogyny, sexism, double standards. And the press just kind of like, yeah, but I don't, I, I really don't see it. I don't, I don't well, really yeah, see it. So it's this blindness. They've never, yeah. they've never really reflected uh, on what they did in those two campaigns. To, to Hillary, as you say, yeah, as you, yeah, as you say, the press remains committed to the idea that Clinton was a uniquely flawed candidate. They, that way, journalists don't acknowledge uh, the yeah. sex, the sexism. I mean, it, it really is infuriating. And you said most of the news coverage on Tana's nomination makes reference to her controversial tweets that are supposedly so damning, but they don't detail what they look like. And you, I, you say, I suspect that's because in truth, they weren't that bad. And so, certainly mm-hmm. we're not out of bounds for mainstream partisan commentary on Twitter. She claimed vampires have more heart than Ted Cruz. Well, that was <clears throat> not only true, but prescient. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And funny. And funny. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> but I... but look, you know, I've, I've, I've always, I've always uh, the DC press worshipped Republican hardball in particular. Uh, it's usually played ninety nine times out of ten by white men. Yeah. Uh, they they are so impressed when when uh, Republicans throw elbows and when they yeah. Uh, obviously Trump. That's all he did was mock, insult, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Neera Tandon wasn't doing any of that. Uh, but boy, uh, don't even come to that confirmation hearing and you're thinking you're going to get a fair shake. The last thing I say for you, if you will not marry me and move here with Fern, the dog, uh, <laughs> oh, Fern, Fern, oh, no, for not Fern, Fern. I'm sorry. Oh, Fern, Fern has left yeah, us. No, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. The other cute one. Yeah. <laughs> I've got to get a wife to physically restrain me from watching Chuck Todd or Bill Maher now because <laughs> oh, uh, Bill Maher. can I, uh, what is going on with him? I, first of all, I'm so sick of this rehabilitating right, rep, awful right wing Republican ladies tour. He had Kellyanne Conway on, he had Megan oh. Kelly on this and she literally was talking about both sides. Do it. That Lou Dobbs is exactly the same as Rachel oh. Maddow. I was like, Oh, <laughs> <laughs> right? She's like, oh, well, they do it on both networks. She's, how, what did she say? Oh, Lou Dobbs, who just got fired for lying yeah. nonstop. And she said, well, it's just like Maddow on the left with, you know, Russiagate. Uh, she oh, went yeah. down that rabbit hole and got embarrassed. And I'm like, no, she didn't. What are you talking <laughs> about? Read the Mueller report. You know, okay. Right. Just, oh, I mean, but literally, but, but, yeah, go ahead. One rabbit hole is empty. One rabbit hole is filled with rabbits. I mean, yeah. That's the, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, that's Eric. The, the quote of the day. The quote of the day from Eric Bowler. Oh, yes. my well, they, they, they love, right. I mean, you know, uh, people love to make that claim. Uh, you know, Russia equals, you know, the insurrection and things like that. Right. Uh, yeah, you know, Megyn Kelly. I mean, my God. You, you know, she had her shot. She she blew it. You oh, know, yeah. and DC yeah. invested $20 million of her. She, she, she couldn't get people to watch and yeah and now she's on the rehabilitation i don't know i don't understand bill maher in there. i know i don't any well and the other thing kellyanne conway just the story that came out why you don't have Kel- give kellyanne conway a platform because everyone knows that so this new what is a vanity fair piece her time in the white house was maga hunger games kellyanne was determined to come out on top her superpower according to associates was leaking to the press while she made a show yeah. inside the white house of needing to stop the leaks publicly bemoaned the palace intrigue story she herself was a font uh, according to associates, she needed to remain Trump's biggest champion while privately insisting to those in the real world um, it, that she was a fellow sane person who understood that Trump was a mess. Uh, adding when she was in the company of certain White House people, she referred to Trump multiple times as a total <laughs> misogynist. I mean, <laughs> don't give this charlatan an opportunity to rehabilitate her image now. It's just infuriating. Right. Well, just real quick, I mean, that, that's the problem the press is going to have and cable news is going to have for four years. You know, they, you know, according to CPAC, you know, Trump is now going to run this party. Yeah. And hard to find people who were in that camp who aren't just pathological liars. Yeah. Uh, and, and you know, Kellyanne Conway is a perfect example. Yeah. Ah, uh, Eric. Anyway, I you were like my <clears throat> mental health. You were like, like my my <laughs> mental health hotline on Mondays. <laughs> I will see you perfect. next. See you next week.